Hey Penguins, Jim Tressel here at the Pollock House on our campus at Youngstown State University. I'm here with my provost, Dr. Brian Smith. Welcome, Brian. Thanks, Jim. Welcome. We're excited about having a chance to share with you today, but first off, I would like to say that we're so, so, so proud of all of the hard work that you're doing in the classroom right now, students. I, I know it's a change. I know it's a stressful time. It's challenging, but thank you so much for making the pivot and making sure that you can earn these great credits, uh, you seniors, that we can have you graduate and many of you begin your next chapter of life ready to go and so proud of the faculty. Uh, they, what they did to get, what was it, Dr. Smith, how many courses online? Well, over 2,000 courses we had to move online in just 13 days. Amazing work by our faculty. Our IT department cannot say enough about our IT department. Our communications folks, we have tried to continually communicate things as we know them, and that's what today is all about, uh, is trying to answer some of those questions. If you recall over the weekend, we did a little Facebook post and we asked you for some of the questions, and we've kind of put together what were the most asked questions so that we can get you as much as we know to answer those questions and then take some of your questions live here as we have our first live stream Facebook YouTube town hall uh, as we finish strong this semester. Uh, we've got about, what, seven weeks to go and, and uh, we're going to finish strong. We're going to get those credits earned. We're going to get ready to graduate and, and then we're going to give you the plans and all of the things that we're working on. So we broke it up into four categories and we have a little grease board here. One of our great communication staff, Katie Hartwig, has better penmanship than I do, so she wrote those up. And, and so we have an academic area, some upcoming discussions. Just the impact it's going to have on the university is significant. There's no question. It's stressful for each and every student. It's stressful for all of our employees. Uh, finances are certainly personal. So we want to start with some of the uh, asked questions uh, that you sent to us, uh, give you to the best of our knowledge uh, what's going on there. So the first one, a lot of questions coming in about refunds. Well, I have refunds on my fees. How about my room and board? Uh, how about late fees? How about various things? So I've got down in my notes in front of me just to give you a little bit of a, a, a progress report to tell you where we are on that. So let's start with refunds. So let's begin with some of the fees that people have been asking about. They've been asking about parking, lab fees, general fees, rec center fees, tech fees, those kinds of things. And so our great people in our finance area are working hard and crunching the numbers and so forth, and they're creating a COVID-19 refund of fees from a prorated basis uh, that will cover various fees and, and kind of get lumped together. Obviously, we probably spent more on than we've gotten on tech fees on trying to get the technical basis uh, to move online here. But by the first week of April, uh, you will, all students will have a check to your account that will give you a refund for the COVID-19 refund of fees. That will be by the first week of April. So you know you've got that coming. Uh, room and board. Uh, we've been in a lot of discussions with the residence hall life people, uh, Eddie Howard and Kelly Beers and, and that staff, and, and, and they've been working hard and crunching the numbers and so forth. And the group that has moved out of the residence halls, we still have some people living in the residence halls, but the, groups, the group that has moved out uh, will receive a room and board refund. So in both cases, we know the refunds are coming in the first week of April. Stay online, stay uh, with communications that will be coming to you from the various areas, but we wanted to answer that question because we know that that's really important for you. In terms of some of the other fees, uh, Neil McNally and, and Provost Smith have uh, made the proclamation, if you will, that we're suspending all late fees this semester, throughout the semester, okay? So all late fees are suspended and, and that should be helpful for some folks. Uh, we're suspending financial holds effective immediately. 
so you won't have that uh, hold on registration and, and so forth. Uh, we're suspending all financial holds effective immediately. And then there are various questions that have been coming on about due dates and, and uh, you know, right now I'm struggling, you know, to be able to meet my due date for some of the time payments and so forth that some of our students have. And, and so there will be due date extensions case by case, according to everyone has a different situation, through, you have to uh, have those discussions case by case through financial aid, through the bursar, through the registrar, the people that uh, you have normally worked with. So those are some of the most asked questions from a financial standpoint. I hope that helps clarify some things. I hope it gives you some peace of mind. Uh, we know it's a tough time uh, from a financial standpoint individually, and we know it's a tough time for the university, so we're trying to do the best we can for all involved so that we can be as good as we can be going forward. And so with that, I'd like to turn to Provost Smith to talk about some of these most asked academic questions. Provost? So you know, President Tressel, we receive emails and concerns every day from students who want to know about their classes and uh, whether things are continuing as usual. Uh, and I want you to know that uh, our team has worked really hard to think about things from your perspective. And we've put the kind of support and services together to help you. And one of our big challenges now is communicating that effectively with you. Uh, so uh, as far as working remotely, several of our students have asked the question, uh, I don't have a computer or I don't have Wi-Fi or what about uh, using CAD programming from, from home? Is that going to be available to me? And as President Tressel mentioned before, uh, our information technology team has worked hard to uh, figure out what those software needs were and what kind of computing technology that you need. Now, you should have received a questionnaire from us asking you what your uh, uh, computer and Wi-Fi needs are. And if you didn't receive that and you have a need or have a question about technology, please send an email to, and I'll repeat this again slowly, JT Wormley at YSU.edu. That's JT, just like Jim Tressel, JT Wormley, W O R M L E Y, at YSU.edu. And if you send that email, then, then JT will work with you to make sure that you'll get the either information that you need or the technology that you need. So we received a lot of questions from students who say, well, what about my clinical, or what about my internship, or what about student teaching? The governor said we're supposed to stay at home. How will that work? Well, I want you to know at Youngstown State, we put as a number one priority uh, the, the health and safety of our students. And so whenever possible, we've tried to come up with a plan where students can uh, learn virtually the same kinds of things that they might have learned in the field. There are a few exceptions, but in every case, I've asked our deans and our faculty to put uh, students as the number one priority as far as their safety goes. So we're, we're going to not put you in harm's way, and we're also going to find a way to make sure that these credits count for you and that you can graduate on time. Uh, so with that uh, in mind, some students have also said, well, I have the computing technology I, I need. I think I'm, I'm ready to go but you know, I might need some help with classes or I might need to see my advisor. Well, one thing that we want to assure is, is that our students still have that great wraparound support that you've already had. So for those of you that, are, that have your cell phones handy, if you'll Google YSU Center for Student Progress, so it, in, on my phone it comes up pretty quickly, so YSU Center for Student Progress, you should get a page that comes up that looks like this and there are, are um, a number of links that'll help you with such things as uh, tutoring or supplemental instruction or help with Blackboard. Also, if some of you out there would, would like to assist with tutoring, if you go to the tutoring tab here, you'll be able to sign up and say, hey, I'd like to help other students with their needs as well during this difficult time. Hey, Provost, I was able to do it. I'm the least technical person on this campus and I even found that and when I googled it in it was the first thing that came up and so if I can find it you can find it 
and because we know you need those services and our people are ready to give them. So our students are also asking us questions about commencement, especially if they're a, a senior. Uh, are we still going to be holding commencement? Well, for now, we're planning on postponing commencement a little while. And so we'll have more information on that soon. Uh, but we're thinking about holding a grand celebration to, to look at the uh, great work that our students have, have done and figure out a way that we can really uh, celebrate that, gr that graduation. Now, you're thinking, well, if I don't go to commencement, then I'm not going to get my degree. Well, uh, there's actually a difference between walking at commencement and getting your degree. And so we're going to make sure that uh, as soon as you finish your coursework, that you'll be able, be able to get that diploma and, uh, and have your degree conferred just, just like normal. And so it's important that, uh, that you know this because you may need to send transcripts off for graduate study or need to have those transcripts as you seek employment. And so we want you to know that we're continuing uh, our, our support of you. And if you do make a request for transcripts, please know that uh, we're only sending those out once per week. So campus is not closed, but offices, uh, our employees are working remotely. And so those may go out a little more slowly than, than usual, but we'll still be able to fill, fulfill those requests as always. If I could interject because and go back to the finance part, you know, there's a graduation fee. Well, we still have the same cost. We still have those beautiful red folders that you'll be able to display and hang on your office wall. And, and we still want you to get your cap and gown. And because, you know, what I envision for a celebration, and I know I haven't had a chance to, to get everyone to buy into it, but just picture out down the road here. Now it's August. And you know, through our sacrifices, stay at home and working remotely and taking courses remotely and all that, we defeated this virus. You know, w w we got it to the point where, you know what, we're going to be back to maybe not business exactly as usual, but pretty darn close. So visualize yourself in August. It's a beautiful sunny day in Youngstown, Ohio, and the students have just moved back into the residence halls, and, and there's all the welcome week activities, and there's all that going on. And then we make the highlight of that weekend, the celebration of the class of 2020. Stambaugh Stadium, people hanging from the rafters, people wearing their cap and gown there saying, man, do I remember my senior year, what I had to go through those last seven or eight weeks. And just having a, a while, you know, it will almost be like a combination of federal frenzy, welcome week, football game, uh, you know, you know what, we might even get the band to come out there. I, I don't know what we'll do, but, you know, I, I can just imagine a heck of a celebration because, you know what, every faculty member will deserve that celebration, every staff member, every student, uh, every support person, and, uh, you know, we've got to think about what's down the road, and, and, I, and I'm, I'm thinking about, man, what a party in Y-Town but we still have to do that graduation fee. We do. So, as always, uh, if you have other questions about your classes or um, specifically about what's happening in your specific class, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, advising will be available as always, too. So let us know what your concerns are and we'll, and we'll reach out to you quickly. Jim? Can I add one more thing on, on the academic side that we just got at the midnight hour here before we came on uh, live on YouTube. I don't think I've ever been live on YouTube, so like this is a this is a watershed moment. But we got a call from Jim Yukic uh, about the service desk, and he said yesterday we had a little service desk glitch. We had a glitch with our phones, and and he said on a normal day we might have a, just a handful of calls dropped. Well, yesterday we had a few hands full of calls dropped. Uh, his uh, his tips and, and his thing for us today is, number one, we've resolved the phone glitch. So we should not be having those drop calls. And number two is we boosted the staffing that will be there to answer the calls. Because here, here we are, I think about 10% of our classes are totally online before the coronavirus. And now 100% are 
totally online. And so we're learning as we go. Every day we're learning as we go. And so we have boosted staffing. The phone glitch is fixed. So don't hesitate to make those calls to the service desk if you need some help. So let's move uh, Provost Smith onto some of those upcoming questions. And we've had a lot of great questions, and we're going to have time for plenty of, uh, of other questions online here. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about uh, what your thinking is and what you're working on in terms of preparing us for our summer classes. Well, you know, we want to make sure that we continue to offer summer classes to our students so they can continue with their degree. Uh, there's, there's no mention of canceling summer or anything. Uh, we, we have some thoughts about when will we be able to open up again. And so we're going to be working uh, keenly with our, with our faculty and staff to look at different options for summer and what that might look like. Uh, so if we're able, able to come on to campus, maybe we might need to move back that start date a little bit. Uh, if, in fact, uh, this emergency continues, uh, we would look at offering those classes uh, online or remotely as we're doing now. Uh, but we're feeling pretty good that, that by the time summer comes around uh, that, that we'll be able to open things up a little bit. Uh, but, but stay tuned for that. We don't really know exactly what date those will be opening. Uh, you should be able to still uh, uh, register for classes as you, as you have uh, beginning in, in early April. Don't see any reason why we wouldn't continue with that. So continue with your, with your plans and stay tuned for how we'll be actually offering those uh, remotely or in person. Yeah, and, and I think we can uh, ease our students' minds that the courses that you know, they were counting on, that they were gonna need, whether it's remotely like we're doing now or in person, you know, like maybe they had planned to do, one way or the other, we're going to have a successful summer. It may look differently, mm -hmm. just like the last half of this semester is looking differently. Uh, but we're going to do all we can. Again, let go back to that financial thing. Uh, this, this is a tough time financially for everyone. The state of Ohio is talking about their revenues going down dramatically and, you know, the funding for education and the funding for so many different services. You know, we've all got to look for ways to be more efficient and so forth. But suffice it to say, we're going to have summer classes in some fashion or form. Now, I have a question, even though this wasn't one of the questions. So, if I'm a student now and I'm getting ready to register for summer, do I do my summer registration the same time as my fall registration? So, those registrations will be opening up uh, for the at, the at the same time. When you can actually register depends upon a, a schedule that's published online. And so, uh, I believe we start with graduate students first and then, and then move that, that way. Uh, but we'll be able to register for those uh, really soon. So I would do my summer ones and my fall ones right when it opens up. Right. Okay, so make sure you're keeping an eye on when those deadlines are. And if you're, I don't know what the pecking order is, but I think it's, if you have, you know, 100 credits, you're mm -hmm. probably going to get to register before someone with 12 credits or whatever. So keep an eye on it. Keep that communication. We talk all the time about the importance of communication. Really, you should probably end up with more communication with your advisors and your faculty and your Center for Student Progress and your tutors, maybe than you've had when we were here live. I don't know uh, if, if we could get that enhanced communication going on so that we make sure uh, that we're getting signed up for those summer courses and for those fall courses. So let's go to the next group. We've been getting some calls and, and or not calls, but uh, questions. Uh, from some of our incoming students because you know they're sitting here, it's late March, they're starting to think about what's next and, and they're gonna be penguins, we call them fresh winds and, and so talk a little bit about orientation and the admissions process and, and the things that are available there. So orientation is so important, we're excited to welcome you to be part of our penguin family and orientation plays a big part of that. Uh, you get a good feel for what our culture's like, uh, what our student experience is like, uh, and of course, what our academic programs lo look like. Uh, we don't want to sacrifice any of that. Uh, and so we're still going to be continuing with uh, a freshman orientation and uh, freshman uh, registering for, for classes starting next year. Uh, we're not certain yet that those first few orientation sessions will schedule a, as planned, uh, but we're thinking a lot of things like what, what does virtual orientation look like uh, if we're not able to in, invite students for our campus experience. 
We're also thinking, uh, how can we uh, let you see and feel the excitement of campus without actually being here? Uh, so, so this is something that we're working behind the scenes right now uh, to, to have complete continuity of services, even when it comes to freshman registration and orientation. So the short answer to the question is just like summer school, one way or the other, we're still having it. We're still having orientation, we're still having summer school, we're signing up for the fall. I wanted to add one other thing that we got late here uh, from the admissions people. The admissions people have created a live chat, so they're able to, so if you have younger siblings or you have neighbors or whatever that are wondering how do I uh, learn more about Youngstown State, our admissions people have live tours of campus because right now people aren't traveling and they're being asked to stay at home so we can flatten that curve and get on the other side of this. Uh, and we also have some links for information sessions about the university. So all anyone uh, that's interested in learning more about YSU and how do I get admitted and how do I apply, just go to the admissions website mm -hmm. and uh, you can have a live chat, live tour, and a very informative session uh, as we go. So those are some of the questions that people have already sent to us about, well, what about the future? You know, tell us what's going to happen next. So let's get to the last one, Provost Smith, and let's talk a little bit about, people are asking about some of the events that were planned, building, access, uh, anything from that standpoint you want to answer? So you know, President Tressel, uh, recently the, the governor asks everybody to, to stay home, and previous to that, uh, both uh, uh, the, the governor and the federal government ask us to limit uh, how, how many people are in the same room at the same time. Uh, you'll notice that the president and, and I uh, are, are practicing social distancing right now. It's really impossible for most events to practice appropriate social distancing. We're trying to uh, prevent the spread of, uh, of the virus. We're trying to limit it, not only for the safety of uh, our faculty, staff, and our students, but for the safety of our community. Uh, so we have uh, canceled uh, events through this semester, all YSU events on campus and all YSU sponsored events. And we're also limiting travel for our uh, employees uh, in, in cases where it's not uh, just critical for, for our, our university. Uh, so we're following the lead of our governor uh, and we're practicing social distancing and that means that uh, we're not allowing people to gather in buildings uh, and we're not uh, continuing with our events for this semester. You know, you mentioned following the lead of the governor and uh, you know, hopefully you've had a chance to tune in occasionally to the governor's instructions and I think our governor has really been proactive. Our lieutenant governor has been working extremely hard with the businesses to find out their needs and I know that affects your families and so forth. But you know, also I think kind of the cool thing is that the uh, director of the Ohio Department of Health is Dr. Amy Acton. Mm -hmm. Dr. Acton is a YSU grad, Neomed grad. I think it was called Neo-UCOM back in those days. But uh, she has been like a rock star. Her ability to teach us about why we do need to have social distancing, why we do need to wash our hands, you know, I, I was telling these guys, I've never washed my hands so much in my life, and you're supposed to sing happy birthday or staying alive, staying alive, you know, whatever it happens to be. But, you know, she's done an unbelievable job of, of helping us understand that these 15 days are really critical, not that we can let our guard down after these 15 days. Uh, we've got to make sure we continue and really, uh, you know, have some of these things become part of our our daily habits that you know maybe we got a little bit lax on and and so forth and and but for now you know no big events I'm sure in our future we'll be able to get back to that but we'll have to you know be smart about how we do things and and how we take care of ourselves and so forth and so speaking of taking care of ourselves now right down on the corner there of, of Lincoln and Wick is the uh, Wick primary care our Mercy Health uh, partners uh, right now, they're opened up as a flu clinic. We're trying to keep as much traffic away from the real needs of some of the things in, in the downtown and Boardman, Mercy, and, and uh, all of our regional. Uh, the vice chair of our board of trustees, uh, Dr. Anita Hatchstead, is the CEO of the Salem Regional Hospital, and I just saw them on the news, and 
all the amazing things they're doing, but we're trying to lessen the impact so that the capacity of our healthcare places can handle the gravest needs right now. So in terms of our WIC primary care, it is opened up as a flu clinic. Still, those few students that are on campus right now, we have students living in some of our residence halls. Uh, they're living very safely in our, our uh, private partnership uh, apartments out there that have their own bathrooms and have their own bedrooms and not a bad place to be. Uh, we've got to be careful about affecting our parents and, and our grandparents and so forth. But there are still some people around campus here. WIC primary care is there for you, but my only message to you would be uh, be aware that the strain on the health care, you know, if you can handle things on your own or maybe call your primary care physician or something, going to uh, health care agencies and hospitals and primary care maybe isn't the greatest place to go, but if you do have a need, that WIC primary care is there for you, and it's there for the community. That's why we created that partnership to have a nice primary care right in the center city as we've seen our university and our city grow together, and we've seen so much more activity in our center city. We thought that was a great thing, so make sure you're taking care of yourself, but be smart and do all those things that Dr. Amy Acton has asked us to do and, and uh, go on that coronavirus.gov, I think is what mm -hmm. it is, yep. coronavirus.gov. You can get so many questions answered about, well, I'm, I'm, I've got this feeling or that feeling or what should I do and, and that type of thing. So let's be smart about how we take care of ourselves. And also, let's talk about, uh, Provost Smith talked a little bit about the, the number of our employees that are working remotely. I would say 95% of our employees are working remotely. Right. There's some people that have to be here you know, to, to answer uh, various things or to make sure the boilers are on or make sure that the, our YSU police, you can't say enough about the YSU police. I mean, they're here to make sure that anyone that has a need, uh, they're great partners with YPD, uh, making sure that all of our facilities are protected and, and so forth. They've been doing yeoman's work. Uh, all of our people who have uh, adjusted to working remotely I mean, it's a new thing. I, I've never spent more time on a laptop in my life than mm -hmm. I've spent here in the last 10 days or so. Uh, but there's a lot of stress. Uh, I was just talking to one of our employees today that uh, I could hear the, uh, the screaming in the background because their children are at home, you know, and, and they're trying to keep them mm -hmm. pinned to their laptop. You know, students, you can imagine this has been a tough discipline thing for you to really stay glued in to get your work. How about if you were in second grade? I mean, how, how much discipline would that take? I mean, th that would be rough. It's tough on our employees going through all this, and we appreciate so much their willingness to do whatever it is the university needs, uh, which is first and foremost, not be here, and secondly, get your job done. But with that, you know, there, there's that stress, there's those mental health challenges that employees have, students have. Want to talk a little bit about the, the services and so forth? So, um, yeah, so, you know, we, as I mentioned before, we want to make sure that, that we have every service uh, available that, that we've had available before. And, and we want to con continue uh, with uh, wraparound services for our students that uh, maybe need a little, uh, little, little help, someone to, to talk to. I mentioned to you before uh, that our advisors are still av available, and we're also going to have people available to uh, counsel with you if you have those worries or, or fears. Uh, so just, uh, you know, reach out to uh, us at the university through the webpage. Uh, there's, a, there's a link at the top of the page. Uh, it's the COVID-19 link, and there's a sub area there called academics, and there's a, a, an area for you uh, to have your questions about academics answered, uh, in, including, uh, including to whom do you reach out. Uh, also, when we mentioned before uh, with the um, uh, with, with the, the, the cell phone, uh, you can reach out to these apps to, to get help for all your, your uh, needs as well. So we're gonna do our very best to make sure that we're standing up all our services to, to help you uh, right now uh, and into the, the, the next academic year and beyond. 
Is, are there any links? I, I'm calling out to the, to the gallery here of our staff. Are there anything specifically on our mental health counseling services that normally, is there a link or is there? Google under the YSU website to the, the counseling center? Correct. I'll pull it up right now. Okay, we'll pull it up here. I, I told you I was getting better at that, but I, I'll, uh, oh man, I have a missed call from my daughter. Man, we're going to, okay, we've still got another half hour. She's going to have to wait there. But you know what? Keep in touch with your family. Keep in touch with your mm -hmm. grandparents because, you know, your, your grandparents are being told don't even venture out. You know, don't even, don't even think about, uh, you know, leaving the house and, those of us in that 60 or higher category, we're considered vulnerable. And I never thought of myself as vulnerable until all this coronavirus. And they start saying, uh, you know, that, that that's, uh, that's a reality. So make sure you do reach out to your families and, and reach out for your own needs. Uh, do we have that website? YSU Counseling Center. YSU Counseling there's Center. A, there's a phone number that you can call directly that's listed on there. Okay, there's a phone number right on there. And, and uh, Katie Hartwig's assistant, Shannon Tyrone, got us that information, and we appreciate that. And, and so those are some of the other things. Now I think we're going to have a chance to take some live questions. Now this is, this is the next level here. I never thought I would be quite this technical, Provost Smith. So here's the question, and, and uh, this is from Megan, okay? Uh, are there any talks about the university encouraging the non-university affiliated area apartments, Edge, Enclave, et cetera, campus to follow the university's fine example of releasing students from their lease agreements. Well, let me take that one. That's not an academic one. Should I put this down or no, just leave it there? Okay, I don't wanna go offline. I don't know anything about rebooting or any of that kind of stuff. So, so he, here's the answer to that question and, and maybe the realities to that question. Uh, first of all, uh, we've got a number of students in our uh, public-private uh, apartment-style living, our courtyards and so forth, uh, and it's really not a bad place to be because of your ability to social distance and quarantine, uh, you know, if necessary. Um, so they're still having, you know, very legitimate use. There are some people who aren't uh, choosing to stay in them. We understand that. Uh, those public-private partnerships are companies, really, that have invested in us by creating uh, opportunities for us to have apartment-style living for our students. Uh, and obviously, their, their investment to build those wonderful things and has been, I think, a, a tremendous boost to the overall experience of our campus, the look of our campus, uh, this highly unusual situation that, you know, the, here we are in this coronavirus, you know, we haven't had anything like this for, what, 102 years 102 since years. the Spanish flu and, and so forth. With that, though, those public-private companies still have their bills to pay. They still have their investment, uh, millions of dollars to build those places and so forth. With all that being said, we are meeting with the whole group of our public-private partners, along with our folks that manage our courtyard. And we're gonna have a little discussion of, is there anything we can do to ease the burden? Is there anything we can do that you know, won't upset someone's ability to pay back their lender uh, you know, and, and pay their, their debt? I think we have somewhere in the neighborhood of $15 million worth of debt on the courtyards because I remember back when we were talking about building them in the late 90s and we finally built them in, I think, 2001 or two, uh, is that, you know, we wanted to make that investment, you know, knowing that that was something the students were interested in, something the students wanted. And so we still have quite a debt service from that standpoint uh, on the courtyard. So long answer to your short question and a very good question, understandable question. Uh, we are having some discussions to figure out, is there anything, anything at all that we can do, you know, to, to uh, take that burden away, knowing that our students can still live there, so it's not that they were asked to leave there, but is there anything we can do to make that, uh, make that a little easier? Okay, here we go. Next question. Will there be a refund for Flex and Pete's points? 
Uh, the answer is yes uh, if you haven't spent them. Now, if you've spent your peach points, we're not going to reimburse you for the peach points that you've spent. And so, again, with our um, room and board and our, our COVID-19 refund of fees, that's, stay tuned, that's coming, and you're going to uh, ideally have your credit, your, your uh, account, whatever, by the first week of April. Okay, we're going to the next one. The, oh, I didn't say who the last one was. Who was that last one? We got to give him a shout out. First name. Megan. Megan. Oh, Megan was Megan. the very first one. Who was the second one? Peach Points. Serena. Sorry, Serena. I wanted to give you your moment in the sun, Serena. That was a great question. Okay, next is Alice. Hey, where's all the guys with the questions? <laughs> What's up with that? Okay, Alice. Here we go. Oops, Alice, your question. How are we supposed to get loaner equipment? I'm currently stuck at a friend's house in Alliance. Could my something mom get it? Reach, okay, here's the answer. Reach out to the service desk, 330-941-1595. You want me to write that down? Huh? This is live at Youngstown. Okay, here we go. Three. Three zero oh, nine four one. What was that number? One five nine five. Okay, that's. You can reach out, Alice, and, and uh, they'll take care of it. Or send an email to JT Warmly at ysu.edu. You want to get JTs up there? Well, let's do okay, it. Okay, go ahead. While I'm getting the next question here. Okay, Christine from Facebook. That's four and zero. Oh, women against the men. Hey, men. Come on now, you're, you're embarrassing me here. The curious people are the ones that advance. You have to ask questions. Okay, here we go. Christine says, are you doing anything to provide toiletries and food to students in apartments on campus? Are there any food pantries? Okay, the quick answer to that is students can contact the Outreach and Support Office, Nicole Kent Strollo, which is N Kent Strollo at ysu.edu. Oh man, got to get a different color. Oh man, Let's see here. We're going to post them online too so they can see it in the chat. N Kent Strollo at ysu.edu. And if you can't write fast enough, we're also going to post those online so you can see that in the feed. Okay, that, that's your four. I can't see that, Ross. You're putting the, uh, I can't see. Okay, so anyway, it has been moved from its location in Kilcawley up to Chick-fil-A. Okay, so if, if there's a need there at the food pantry, uh, you can go to Chick-fil-A for that. Okay, Corey. Is this a Corey guy or a Corey girl? Guy, we finally, you Corey, you're the man. Will the institution have all courses allowed to be credit, no credit, and count towards a degree? So we, we are offering this semester uh, for students that choose the option to choose a credit, no credit option. Um, so you have to opt in to that, and uh, you'll, you'll have uh, some, some time to make that decision uh, all the way into late April. Uh, but what I want you to know about that is it's something that you need to think about before you accept that option. Uh, so if you're considering uh, pursuing a graduate degree or as you look at uh, the other courses in your major, uh, you may decide not to pursue a credit, no credit option. Uh, in some areas, for example, in, in nursing, uh, we're not allowed by our crediting body to offer a credit, no credit option in nursing. But for the majority of our majors and minors, uh, you'll have that option if you choose to opt in to credit, no credit grading. Okay, keep talking for one more second because I'm, I'm texting to my daughter that I'm live. Yep. And she, she had just called and I missed her call. So I'm on a live YSU Facebook, YouTube, is that correct? Okay, So she'll be impressed. In credit, no credit grading, um, if you have a A, a B, or a C normally, uh, that would translate into credit. Uh, so uh, if you, if your professor feels as if your work was uh, reflective of a D or an F grade, uh, that's, that's no credit. Uh, so as I said, there's, uh, 
It's not something that, that needs to be entered into lightly, and so we want you to seek permission uh, if you wish to opt into credit, no credit grading for one or more classes. All right, we have Issy from Facebook. I'm a commuter student and bought a specialized meal plan in Kilcally for spring semester. Will the remaining balance of my account carry over to fall? Would there be any refund or is there another plan being discussed? It will be a refund. You know, we don't want to get into the crediting forward because people have needs right now and so we really think it's important that, that people get their refunds now. So by that first week of April, you'll have a refund on the remaining balance. Okay, Mike, and lots of others. So Mike, Mike, you're supposed to be socially distancing. You shouldn't be with lots of others. <laughs> so I hope you're a, a long way apart, okay? So, I am a commuter student and bought a specialized meal plan. Okay, Mike, I already answered that. Quit calling back, okay. Liz from Facebook, if we don't walk at the postponed commencement, will we get any refund for our graduation fee? Unfortunately not, Liz. Uh, we still are gonna give you that beautiful red folder and, and the, the nice certificate in, and, and you'll have your graduation gown so that you can take pictures you know, wherever you are at the time. You might have a new job in Montana or somewhere and take a nice picture in the mountains and so forth. And we're still gonna have the expense of having that uh, commencement. Uh, we're still going to plan to have a, a, a great thing. So really, I guess what I'd say is see if you could get back here. That'd be great, Liz. Thank you. Yeah. Melanie from YouTube. Will over 60 classes still be available? The 60 plus program? I don't, I don't know. I think, do you know much about those? I don't know much about it, but we're still offering the courses. And so yeah. it, it should be under the, the same scenario as, as before, but offered remotely, of course. And, and I think, if, if I recall, because I think I've had a couple 60 plus people in my class. In fact, I kind of liked it because, you know, I wasn't the only old person in the class. Uh, I think if there are seats available in a class, people 60 or older in the state of Ohio can take the class for nearly free. They might have a fee or something. So, yes, I think the answer is... Okay. Well, uh, if there's something that we said wrong about that, we'll get back to you. How's that? Okay. Issy. That's the second one from Issy. All right. Issy from Facebook. Where is Facebook located? Issy's from Facebook. Okay. Will summer school be online? Is there any help with the cost of online courses this summer as students have something jobs, have lost jobs? Um, well, I think you talked about the fact that they could be, might right. be. So we're, we're investigating different scenarios. Um, you know, certainly if uh, the current situation continues, we would be offering summer school completely online. Uh, if we have the opportunity to bring students back to campus, uh, we, we will do that either on time or on a delayed schedule. Uh, so for many of our classes, uh, it's preferable that we have our students uh, in, in labs or working with, uh, with, with people as they're pursuing their, their, their clinical experience. Uh, as far as help regarding online, uh, as of right now, the, the fee structure will be the, the same as it is now. Okay. All right, Mike from Facebook. I'm a graduate student at YSU. Will I be refunded for my parking pass? Uh, my bet is that will be the same in that, in that COVID-19 refund of fees. Parking prorata is, is prorated with a number of other things. So I would think graduate students will have the same kind of, uh, I've never asked that question specifically, but I think our undergrad and grad students obviously will be treated the same. That makes sense. Yep, okay. Nor, I know Nor. Hello, President Tressel and YSU. I just wanted to say thank you to everyone, including those working behind the scenes at YSU for all the work and effort to helping our students stay safe and go Gwens. Thanks, Nor. Nor will be one of those ones coming back for that, because I know Nor has a job lined up, and I know she'll, 
it's just a short two hour and 40 minute drive if you just kind of edge the speed limit just a touch where I know you're working. And so make sure you drive that two hours and 40 minutes back and, and take part in, in our wonderful celebration uh, whenever it is. I'm lobbying for August, but we'll see when it is. Okay, Rachel from Facebook. What about YSU student employees that aren't able to work remotely? What can they do to continue an income? So here's our student plan. And I think Claire Berardini and, and gosh, I don't know who all was involved in these discussions, but whoever it was, they've done a great job of creating what we think is, is the best thing for the institution, the best thing for the students, and the best thing for experiences. We've got a few students working on campus just because our residence halls are going. Uh, we've got some IT people I know that have been helping the faculty get things up and going. And, and so we've got some people working on campus, so that's not a problem. We've got some people who naturally are going to work remotely. We need those tutors, those peer mentors, you know, those various things, uh, CSP workers and so forth. And then there's the group that, you know, maybe something doesn't fit perfectly remotely. Your job is to get with your supervisor, ask your supervisor, hey, is there anywhere else I could be helpful? Because I would like to continue working, I certainly need the income. Yes. Now I think in, in the uh, communique that Claire Berardini and her group sent out is that everyone for these first two weeks is going to make the average of what they've made Correct. weekly uh, because we're just trying to get things worked out. The rest of the people will have some opportunity to keep working and so our goal is for everyone that wants to work and that does their work uh, to be able to earn those student wages that, uh, that you were you know, budgeting for. So we think there still will be opportunities. It won't be the same kinds of opportunities as before, but we think so you would want to be in contact with your professor and your classes. Uh, I hope that your professors have reached out to you already. If they have not, uh, send them an, a, an email. So uh, your professors have done a fantastic job uh, within the time frame given to redesign the course so that it can be continued remotely. Uh, some, uh, there, there's there gonna be filming classes, some they'll be having you work on, on a, a learning management system, but your textbook is, is likely the same one you had before. And, and I've got one other tip that came on from our Cracker Jack staff here. The YSU bookstore joined Vital Source, called Vital Source, to provide free access through digital books. So check through the YSU bookstore. It's on their website, it's on their website, website Vital Source, on the YSU bookstore website, and you'll be able to get free online. So that's a bonus. Okay, Luke from Facebook. I am a student paying out of pocket on payment plan through the bursar. I also lost my job due to the crisis. I make the last payment at the end of the month. This will put me in a very uncomfortable situation. Uh, I can't read it all. Finals, considering YSU, considering any addendums to the payment plans for students in my situation. Uh, let me go back to my financial. So due date extensions and so forth are case by case. So I would reach out to the bursar and say, here's my situation. Is there any uh, path for me forward? And uh, they'll be more than happy to help you, uh, you know, as much as they possibly can. So for, for students outside of student employment at YSU, if you find yourself in a, a situation where you've been laid off or lost your job, uh, there are thousands of jobs that are coming online and are uh, uh, available in Ohio. So the whole logistics supply chain is not stopping. We still need to move uh, food to, to, to Ohio. We still need to keep stores open. So there are thousands of jobs coming open. Uh, maybe you've heard even through Amazon. Uh, so if you go to the, our website, ohiomeansjobs.com, uh, then, then you can see what kind of jobs may be available to you. So the next one is from Hakuna Matata. I've heard of Hakuna Matata. Hakuna Matata. I think YouTube. that means no worries. No worries, that's right. Has the withdrawal date been changed to April 24th for all classes? Yes, sir. It has been. Okay, that's an easy one. Good job. See, no worries. Okay. Next here. Claire from Facebook. Is there a possible graduation date in mind for August? 
Well, I don't know that there is one other than, uh, so here, here's, let me get to, my, get to my calendar here. Here's what I'm kind of lobbying for, and I, I, again, you guys would relate with this. I don't uh, have much clout around here, but I'm lobbying for uh, either Sunday, August 16th, uh, or something right there. So let's, you know what, we should start like an online, what do they call that? Uh, petition that we have graduation August 16th. Hakuna Matata. <laughs> okay, here we go. Megan from Facebook. What have they offered to assist international students during this time, and what are their greatest needs? Ooh, that's a great one. Great question, Megan. Well, our, our international programs office uh, has done a, a, a great job uh, throughout this, this crisis, uh, and, and not only uh, working with our students who were uh, seeking uh, the coursework overseas, uh, but also working with our international students uh, to, to answer their, their questions. So if you uh, have specific questions about uh, and concerns about uh, uh, your international study uh, here in the, in the States or what that means for you, uh, please reach out to your advisors at the International Programs Office. You know, and I would add, uh, Megan, that uh, our International op Programs Office, I think if you call it the IPO, uh, is doing a great job of keeping in contact with our students, uh, finding out their needs. I know they've already been talking about uh, some of their food needs. I know that the, the uh, bus goes out to Walmart every Friday afternoon from campus for people who don't have transportation, which is the case with many of our international students. But you know, Megan, one thing we could encourage all your sidekicks to do is, you know, some of your buddies who are international students, don't forget about them, you know, drop them a, a text, a, a FaceTime, an email, you know, whatever, because, you know, they're a long way from home in a really serious emergency, and who knows where they're from? They might be from a place that's really having some problems of their own, and they're concerned about their families and friends and so forth, so, you know, that constant interaction and, and uh, just assurance that, hey, we're in this together, we're here for you, and, and uh, we're going to get through this. Next is Courtney from Facebook. Will students be able to return borrowed books, or should they expect to keep them until everything is resolved? And if so, will they be charged for them? I think the library wants us to keep them for now. That's correct, and, yep. and so we're not going to be charging late, late yep. fees for now. Okay, and uh, if there's any questions, though, they can reach out to the MOG library website. And, uh, and send an email or whatever, but I think for now, hold on to them and there'll be no late fees. Serena from Facebook. What are you going to do about those student organization events that were canceled this semester? They still have them when they come back for the same price that they were given. Hmm. Well, I, I don't know about uh, costs no. associated with, with student organizations. Some, sometimes uh, those that, are, uh, that we host on campus but might be national or organizations they had their own fee structures. Uh, it, it, as soon as we're able to convene again, um, we're, we're gonna continue with, with, with those organizational events. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't talk about your specific event and the, the, the cost associated with that, but that's one of those things that I think that we can write down and, and, and look into more. Right, yeah, in fact, one of the messages I got, I, I'm multitask, or uh, we just didn't know, uh, will be posted online later today. So every single question that's uh, been asked, whether we get to it live or we didn't do a very good job live or whatever, we will, uh, we will make sure, oh, wait a minute, I did get a text. Per Jeannie Herman, we will communicate out to the 60 plus group about registration. Okay, we have a website and a group of those who take these courses and the registrar will be reaching out. So that's that kind of back up there and the, can't keep all these devices going here. Okay, next question. Next question. Aren't we live anymore? Oh, we're still live? Hakuna Matata. What, where's your drums? You know, Provost Smith is a drummer. The next time we have a town hall, we might have you bring your drums and, and uh, you know, I did see one choir, I don't know if it was a high school or a college, 
that they did their choir uh, performance remotely. So can you imagine how they got synced up? We would probably need better uh, talent than we have with some of our, uh, <laughs> our folks behind the camera. No, just kidding. Ross Marone yeah. doing a great job behind the camera. This is from Rachel from Facebook. Should student employees who have asked about working in alternate ways but are not able to because of the structure of their job just seek unemployment? Some of us cannot work at temporary jobs such as Amazon because we'll be graduating and are looking for full-time employment within the next months. I don't think that student workers can uh, apply for student employment because you don't have the amount of money made. I think there's a, a limit of I mean, if it's $279 a month or something is the federal limit, you know, to be able. Uh, you know, so I, I would say this, Rachel. I think we're going to have a need for almost every student that wants to work. And so stay on top of your supervisor and say, hey, look, I, I really do. If I, got a, if I just got to email prospective students all day or if I, if I you know, whatever, uh, tell them that you're willing to work and, and be patient because it's not that easy for us to get all these jobs lined up. But we hope that everyone that really wants to and needs to is able to uh, continue being a student employee. Okay, we're going to be wrapping it up here. So with another question, or no, Rachel, you were the last question, so you get the prize for having the last question. Megan was the first question. She gets a prize for that. And, and uh, we just wanted to thank you for taking part in our YSU live stream, Facebook, YouTube, first time ever, not the last. We're going to constantly continue our communication. Keep sending questions and we'll get you answers posted and so forth. But going back all the way to the beginning, uh, we appreciate your sacrifice. We know it's a sacrifice uh, from a stress standpoint. It's a sacrifice financially. It's a sacrifice that you, know, you just miss being on campus. Uh, you're needing to learn a new way to, to uh, take your courses. We appreciate it. We're going to get through this. We're going to follow the president and the governors and, and the doctors and all of the guidelines that we're going to keep our social distancing. We're going to keep those hands washed. Uh, we're going to make sure that we're keeping uh, in touch uh, with the elderly uh, who are our loved ones for us. And, and we're going to get through this and, and we're going to get those credits. We're going to get people graduated. We're going to try to make people as financially helped as we possibly can. We're going to try to keep the, the uh, financial uh, stability of the university as solid as we can and then we're all going to be back together whether you just graduated uh, or you're getting ready to start next fall we're going to get back together August 16th and with that I think I'm being told we got another question oh this is from Whitney Tressel on Facebook that's my daughter in New Mexico Santa Fe social distancing <laughs> stay resilient Gwens is the message you rock Gwens stay resilient from my daughter Whitney. And with that, Provo Smith, thanks so much for the time and, and we appreciate it and hopefully this was helpful for all the YSU family. Thank you.